everybody, and uh, what a pleasure it is to uh, welcome you to the first 2022 flagship event of Business in the Community Ireland. And, uh, and indeed, it is, it, is, it is a pleasure to be opening what is going to be a very exciting hour. Before I forget, let me first uh, say there is a live captions available. You need to go to the chat box at the bottom of your screen and instructions will be there for anybody uh, who wants to access them. Secondly, as you know, this is a recorded event. Thirdly, let me remind you some of our social that is happening, and I'm sure it's going to be very lively social. So hashtag BWR Mark and at BITC Ireland for those who are active in, in, in that space. And finally, this is going to be a very tight agenda. We'll be rushing through quite a lot. So uh, we won't be taking Q&A, but if there are any comments, clarification, or anything that we would be more than happy to come back to you um, after the event, please use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screens. Okay, so let's get started. And uh, today's event is about embedding sustainability in your business and you might wonder why are we having such an event when sustainability has now become commonplace and it's in every single headline and it's in every single um, action plan of business well you might you might ask yourself if we have truly embedded sustainability in our business and you probably have seen this morning's um, very uh, exciting uh, IBEC research on CEO sentiment. And while there's a growing perception around CEOs of the importance of um, sustainability, I was having a quick look at the top list of uh, priorities for Irish CEOs. And of course, talent comes uh, at the top, inflation comes at the top, readjusting our workplaces comes at the top. But interestingly, the low carbon transition comes number eight in the list of priorities. Community engagement comes number 12 in the list of priorities. And sadly, I have to say diversity and inclusion comes number 18 in the list of priorities in, in, that, in that research. So clearly there is a challenge ahead because solving the talent uh, attraction and retention challenge is very much connected to solving the diversity and inclusion challenge. But anyway, we'll talk more ab about that. Today we are celebrating that sustainability is commonplace, but also celebrating that uh, sustainability requires rigor and it requires um, addressing a holistic uh, view of what, uh, what, it, what it should be and, and, and the role sustainability plays in a business. And that's why we're going to talk about the business working responsibly, Mark, and we're celebrating companies that are achieving this uh, certification for the first time and other companies that have uh, are achieving recertification for the second, third, fourth and fifth time, which is absolutely uh, fantastic. I'm just going to say one word around about the business working responsibly mark, and that is that this was a, a third party audited scheme that business and community designed over 10 years ago, very much with the objective of having a robust independent verification of how management systems in businesses are aligned with what is considered best in class on sustainability. So for us, the mark is very much about continuous improvement. This is not about saying companies are perfect, but this is about companies are on a journey of continuous improvement. And that is the, 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 the essence of what we're trying to do with, with the mark. It's around transparency and accountability. And we know the pressures that companies are seeing when it comes to disclosure. And, um, and really having the evidence that they are on, 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 on a meaningful journey towards sustainability. It's also about leadership. It's about demonstrating to your employees, to your customers, to your suppliers, and to community at large that, that, that you're serious about this. Um, and it's also about, uh, as I said at the beginning, a very holistic perception of, or, of definition of what is uh, sustainability or ESG or Let's introduce even a one further acronym for you this morning, EESG. And, and I, I'm, I'm going to talk about that later on when we talk about version five of the business working responsibility mark, which is very much about environmental, economic, social and governance activities and impacts. But anyway, you're here to uh, for a treat 
some very exciting conversations with those companies that have achieved the mark. But before that, and before revealing who are those companies, we caught up earlier with Robert Troy, Minister for Trade Promotion, Digital and Company Regulation. And he wanted to be part of uh, today's uh, celebration. And he recorded a message that I'm delighted to introduce to you this morning. I would like to thank Thanks. Business and the Community Ireland for the invitation to speak to you at today's webinar. It's great to be here, albeit virtually, to congratulate you on achieving the business in the community, business working responsibly, Mark. Amid another challenging year for business, I commend your companies and organisations on your commitment and the personal efforts of many of you to foster excellence and drive continuous improvement in your environmental, social and governance credentials. It is fantastic. You should be proud of your achievements. All of you have recognised at a strategic level that while your business bottom line is vital, without it businesses cannot continue, investors, consumers and job seekers have become more conscious and discerning about which products and services to choose. Investors want businesses to demonstrate how they're engaging with the core business and societal challenges and how they are mitigating risks in areas such as diversity and inclusion environmental sustainability and human rights. Customers are more conscious than ever of the environmental, ethical and social aspects of companies and their products and services. Job seekers want to work for organisations that share their values and contribute positively to the local and global community. Achieving the ISO accredited business in the community mark is a powerful signal nationally and internationally of the initiative your companies and organisations are taking in addressing societal challenges. I want to acknowledge the leadership of Tomás and his team and business in the community Ireland in developing the mark to such a high standard to date. I'm also very pleased to note the involvement of the National Standards Authority of Ireland which is an agency under my department's remit. It has a long and distinguished track record at national and EU level in the field of standards accreditation. The mark exemplifies the high standards that can be achieved through public and private collaboration. Sustainability reporting by companies is an area in which I have a strong personal interest. You are no doubt aware that EU member states' negotiations are well underway on the EU proposal to develop enhanced sustainability reporting by all large companies and by listed SMEs. Given the scale of the climate challenge, the interconnectedness of our economies and global nature of enterprise, it makes sense to work closely with the EU Commission and other member states on the legislative requirements relating to sustainability reporting. The European Parliament, as co-legislator, is also considering the proposal and the European Financial Reporting Advisory Group has been tasked with developing mandatory EU sustainability standards. So there's a lot of work underway and for policy makers and legislators, there is an onus on us to ensure that new rules are clear and consistent and give the maximum relevant information possible to investors, consumers and other stakeholders, while minimising any unnecessary burdens on companies. What is needed is better rather than more information. In this context, I think it's particularly important that this EU proposal is aligned with the suite of EU legislation governing sustainability matters, as well as ensuring that future EU standards are aligned with international developments in sustainability standards. I hope to update stakeholders further on developments later this year as negotiations progress. I want to conclude by saying that the way companies and organisations are valued is being redefined through the development of sustainability reporting and the integration into company strategy. As we emerge from the pandemic, government is committed to driving a recovery that is robust, inclusive and especially sustainable. We will do this through a mixture of targeted funding such as the National Recovery and Resilience Fund and policy and legislation that seeks to introduce balanced reform agenda while keeping a close eye on costs and competitiveness. 
Sustainability reporting to according robust international recognised standards can deliver a competitive advantage. You are ahead of the curve and leading the way for Ireland and the EU. I congratulate you again on the achievement of the Business Working Sustainability Mark 2022. Thank you, Minister Troy, for those insightful words. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Maureen O'Donnell, and I manage the Business Working Responsibly Mark scheme. As Thomas mentioned, we've got an action-packed agenda for you this morning, which includes three conversations with certified and recertified companies. Our first conversation is with one of our recertifying companies. And as you see on screen here, we have Priscilla O'Regan uh, on our virtual stage. Priscilla is head of communications for BT Ireland. Welcome, Priscilla. Good morning, Maureen. Congratulations on uh, another uh, successful young scientist. Well done on adapting to these interesting times. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, um, I think as part of our conversation recently, um, we it was a big decision for BT to go ahead with something as mammoth as the BT Young Scientists and Technology Exhibition and. I guess when I reflect on it, it could have been the easy uh, decision for BT to postpone it, but as so many of the conversations we'll have here today, it is about the impact your sustainability uh, makes. And we um, said BT Young Scientist, you know, the purpose and the vision was always to inspire young people uh, in getting an interest in STEM. So why put talent on hold if we as a technology company can't pivot to virtual you know, it would be a shame. So yes, went ahead with this. I'm really delighted with the outcome. Yeah, and, and a lot of companies have really struggled to make that pivot um, to, to the virtual world. So it's brilliant that, that you guys did that. Um, all at the same time while recertifying. So <laughs> you just recertified this past year, congratulations. Um, why did you choose to go through that process again? Yeah, we, we went through it in 2018, uh, led by my colleague, uh, Gina Kelly. Um, but if you look at our industry in terms of technology industry, and you look at what also has happened in ESGs or EESGs, as, as Thomas said there at the start, so much has changed. And we decided that to have an independent audit of our work was really valid, particularly for our key stakeholder groups, whether it's our employees, our customers, investors, shareholders, communities, etc. It's a massive piece of work, I won't lie, but actually I always said to the team that was involved, that just goes to show, you know, how um, thorough, robust, consistent, and how proud we should be, uh, you know, when we get recertified. So we, we just feel that, you know, this is so important to our stakeholders that uh, it's, it's great proof that we're not actually greenwashing because because there's still so much you know feedback that companies just want to say yes we're doing sustainability the mark definitely proves that you're doing sustainability and making an impact you say that with great certainty in your voice priscilla <laughs> you have the wrinkles to show it mark more <laughs> Um, and, and I'll say too, certainly from an external perspective, as you mentioned, that stakeholder approach, um, that is something, you know, as Thomas was highlighting in the IBEC research, uh, talking about CEO priorities and uh, the, the fact that, you know, we have the super urgent ones there at the top, and then we have these ones that are a bit more strategic um, that, that are that are unfortunately down the list a little bit. Um, from, from an external perspective, your stakeholders it, it, clearly that they value uh, this process that, that you're going through and clearly they value uh, the, the work that you're doing on continuous improvement. Definitely and actually interestingly enough it's a very timely conversation. Um, this morning I'm also working on um, a customer tender and uh, one of the first times where I've actually seen where the customer is actually saying how are you helping us with our sustainability goals? So it's not that criteria section in a bid that says, please tick the box. Do you have this ISO? Do you have, I mean, they all obviously as part of the response, you would have to show that. But interestingly, this is much more about here's our sustainability and what are you as a partner and a supplier going to do to actually help us with? So I think that is a brilliant example of where it's much more important to our external stakeholders and increasingly so. 
That is really good to hear. Um, and we, what you're saying is echoed by a lot of the other companies that we talked to uh, and, and part of the business case, I think, for, for going through this. But you know, you also mentioned that there were some internal uh, changes and positive impacts that, that were had as well as going through the MARC process. Do you wanna talk about that a little bit? Yes, I think when we went through the process, um, you know, it depends how your company is organized in ways. So as you went through the process, you know, brilliant pockets of work happening. So, you know, this is as much as, you know, not everything will need remedies and different things, but it's, you know, what we found is actually there may be silos in your organization where you knew good work was happening, but actually where's that oversight? Where's that like holistic view where you can show that actually everyone is getting the same experience internally, et cetera. So there was one part of our business where it accelerated our decision to actually promote someone in the sense of extending their role so that then there was one uh, person accountable and responsible for that area of the business. So the mark definitely reinforced our decision in terms of organizational structure. That's, that's a really good point. And, uh, you know, in terms of the independent auditing of the mark, so it's not just you're saying that this is what it is. It's not a, a self-attestation. It's actually the, the auditors coming in and verifying this for you, that third-party audit structure. Well, I think an external lens is always really important um, for an organization. And, and that has been great value, whether it's BITC uh, or NSAI, because sometimes, you know, we might be a bit too internal and focused and think, you know, this is the way we've done things. And then someone external looks at it and the process is very rigorous in initial assessments, mock audits, audits. And each time you go, oh, that makes sense. You know, maybe we should um, align ourselves like this um, as well. So I find the external lens was extremely valuable for us. That's great. Thanks, Priscilla. We're, we're nearly out of time, but I've got just a couple minutes left and I would love, 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 love to talk to you about version five. Version five is our new content. Uh, Thomas uh, teased it there in his opening. One of the things about version five is that it has this category called responsible technology. And as a techie myself, uh, I am so excited about that, but you guys are a technology company. Um, so maybe if you could just talk about your interpretation in the next minute or two of, of responsible technology, what does it mean to BT? And, and how do you think that the process that you've gone through now is gonna stand you when you're converting uh, your, your certification to version five? Um, I suppose if we go to the basics, BT's purpose is to connect for good. And our ambition is to be the most trusted um, connector of the world's most trusted connector of people, devices and machines by 2030. So if you look at both of those, you know, technology is transforming lives, whether it is, you know, uh, connected homes, smart cities. And so, you know, the focus for BT is that when we're developing, using or selling technology, that we step back and we ask questions and answer the questions such as um, where does it benefit people, but also to minimize harm, for example. So um, BT has uh, formed a um, responsible tech working group um, to work through all of that. So to say to yourself, what unintended consequences could this technology have on a group of people? What could, it, what's the impact on their rights, et cetera. So they're really important as we step through all of those stages and you know, including our supply chain in that conversation as well. Um, and just a practical example, for example, in Ireland, we're very active members of hotline.ie, um, which is the national reporting line for illegal content and you know, unfortunately child uh, sexual abuse material. And they're broadening, they're having to broaden their remit to include internet image um, abuse, racism, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Working internally and externally with different groups to think through what we sell, develop, et cetera, and um, its role in society, but you know, real focus on minimizing harm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is brilliant. And that's a great angle uh, to, to think about this from. Uh, technology has great potential, but it also has the great potential for harm. So thinking about it from those two perspectives is, is brilliant. Priscilla, we are out of time. Thank you so much um, for your time and for your inspiring words. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you very much. Thanks. I will invite Priscilla to turn her camera and her microphone off. And we are now going to announce our recertifying companies. So uh, first up, our companies 
uh, certifying for the second time. As you just saw, uh, they include BT Ireland, led by Priscilla O'Regan, and the Digital Impact and Sustainability Working Group. We've also got Central Bank of Ireland, led by Bernard Sheridan. We've got Hovion, led by Louise Dennehy and Marguerite Lynch. We've also got Heineken, led by Barbara Ann Richardson. And then Sodexo, led by Susan Creighton. And while we just were talking about the leader names there, uh, and we congratulate all of our companies, it is the teams as well who worked with these leaders so hard to support their successful second certification. Congratulations to you all. Next up, we've got three companies who are certifying for the fourth time. These include Boots. Congratulations to Maeve McNamara and Louise O'Brien, who led the effort with support from Martha Ryan, Pat Laffey, Stephen Watkins. Deloitte Ireland as well, led by Claire Bergen and Daisy Green, with support from the Deloitte team. And then Gas Networks Ireland, led by the formidable team of Christina Vanderkamp and Anne Moore, with support from their colleagues at GNI. Again, congratulations to these companies who have certified four times. Our final two companies have completed their certification for the fifth time. They've literally been with us since the beginning of the mark. Congratulations first to CRH. Special thanks goes to Oliver Mann, Brendan Walsh, Brian Gilmore, Jim Ray, Joanna Lennox, Maeve Hurst, Nicola O'Malley and John McQueenie who led the process and the teams in the CRH operating companies in Ireland. Those companies are Irish Cement, Roadstone, Cochrane and Lime, Northstone, Ferrens, and Cuba Systems. Our final recertification then, and this is their fifth time through as well, is Intel Ireland. Special thanks to Lisa Harlow and to Hugh Hardiman for their leadership and to the rest of the Intel Ireland team. It is brilliant to see these examples of sustained excellence. We raise the bar with every three-year mark certification cycle. So companies that continue to hold their certification, they are committing to not just achieving a static level of excellence, but to continuous improvement as well. Congratulations all. And now we are preempting the announcement of our new companies, giving you the inside scoop, if you will, with our next speaker. Bethany Fiore, Responsible Business Manager for William Fry. Bethany, uh, you have your camera and microphone on. There you are. Sorry, I had you covered in a, in a chat box window. <laughs> and early congratulations to you, Bethany. Thank you so much, Maureen. Thanks for having me here to speak today. Oh, great, great. It, it, uh, you're a new certification. So, so as a new certification, tell us, how did you find the new process? Yeah, well, we're obviously delighted to be certified to the business working responsibly, Mark. Um, as Priscilla said, we found the process to be incredibly challenging, um, but really, really rewarding as well. And um, we've been working with business in the community for a number of years. And when we started, we had a great roadmap for how we wanted to expand our program from something that was really community and charity based to you know, a more comprehensive look, taking in environment and marketplace and workplace and governance. Um, but like a lot of companies, as our program grew, it became more challenging to figure out which of the very worthwhile initiatives to put our time and resources into. So the mark really helped us focus. And by looking at the program through the management system lens and by working with yourself and the mark team, and with all of the business and the community experts, we were really able to figure out what we were doing really well and where were the areas that we, we could do better and we could improve on. And I think the assessment process itself really helped us move our program on light years. I mean, we, we saw huge gains by going through that process and um, are just enjoying the, the efficiencies and um, the increased impact we're able to have as a result. Okay, so that initial assessment, all that evidence gathering, that's part of the new process. We make you dig out all your files and show us your, your whole management system. Uh, that was worth it? <laughs> 
Yes. Yeah. No, it was. It was really worth it. It, it is very time consuming. Um, you know, and we we took a project management approach to it. And um, so I kind of took on the project management role. Um, but we had great leadership support. And I, I think that's key because it, it will require time and it will require resources to do it. And our managing partner, Owen O'Sullivan, is a, a huge believer in the importance of corporate social responsibility to uh, our business and to business in general. And, and his predecessor, Brian Burke, was as well. So had great support there. We have a fantastic team of senior sponsors who all really got stuck in and, and contributed and were excited about the, the, the possibilities and, and the improvements we could make. And then fantastic committees, you know, my colleagues across the firm um, in all different areas who, who really um, supported the work as well. Um, I think we often tend to jump from one initiative, initiative to another. You know, we, we plan and we execute and then we move on. And the assessment process, the evidence gathering, it was a really great opportunity to pause, to recognize that we were actually doing a lot more than we realized. We were, we were having a bigger impact than we realized. Um, and then it helped us get some clarity on where we wanted to be and what that vision was for, for our business and our program. So it was really, really beneficial. That's great. And you know, you you mentioned a couple of things. You mentioned you had a project manager that was running this. Um, you had your leadership team uh, support. So you had support from the highest levels. So important, so important. And then you had the structure underneath all of that with people that were willing to kind of help it help out through the process. Um, so I think to me, that's one of the keys of success for companies going through this process that they really properly resource it because it is a heavy lift uh, through the through the whole thing. Um, but to your point, you know that continuous improvement that you get as a result of it is a, is a big benefit that comes out the other side. Um, when a company comes to us asking for help with the business case of going through such a rigorous process, would would that be what you would say uh, around it, or what would you say if you were in in our shoes? Well, I think you know, CSR isn't a nice to have anymore. It's, it really is a business imperative. And, you know, I think um, it's interesting because in the past when, when things would happen like a recession or a business would go through, you know, a, a time where they needed to look at their budgets, CSR was often the first thing up on the chopping block, right? You know, it was looked at as this is nice to have, but not business critical. And so when COVID hit, I think a lot of people in my role thought, here we go again, you know, we've been making great progress, but we're going to have to pull back. And I think what was really interesting was that um, companies didn't do that, you know, they, they actually doubled down and they continued to invest and, and a lot of them really focusing on their investment in their people, which, you know, obviously with what everyone was going through was really important. But I think for myself and, and other CSR professionals, we, we said, wow, we've turned a corner here. You know, sustainability is really part of the business now because it's looked at as business critical and something we need to continue to invest in. And the mark, I mean, I, you know, Tomas mentioned it earlier. I think people, whether it's your clients or your customers or your employees, they're looking for more than just promises and, and PR spin. They want to see authenticity and accountability and transparency. And that's what the mark helps provide. Yeah, absolutely it does. And uh, it is, it's heartening to me uh, to hear that, that you're viewing it from that perspective, that sort of genuine approach to really uh, trying to get what is a competitive standard to help you in the competitive market. Um, and some of those points that, that you were talking about in terms of the transparency, the authenticity, the accountability, those, those are all things that, that Thomas was talking about it at our opening. Um, so it, it definitely is, I think, um, part of, uh, uh, and, and we heard Priscilla mention it as well, part of, the, part of the demand that's coming. The thing that I find really interesting about it as well is when uh, COVID hit, like you said, what 
I thought was going to happen was exactly what you mentioned, where companies were just going to go off and, and focus on, you know, the kind of the okay, what do we what do we do to get out of here, the uncertainty of it. And instead, what we saw was this, as you correctly pointed out, doubling down uh, of of um, companies on their sustainability and their CSR and their strategic agendas. A lot of them have come up with new purposes as a result of this and new strategies. So it is, it's just brilliant to see that um, and, and very heartening. I, I gotta say though, it, it again, going back to this, it is a big lift. You know, there, there is a process that you have to go through. It takes, gosh, anywhere from, uh, it could take maybe as, as a uh, little time as, as a month or two, no, not really, three months maybe on, on the short side, but it can take, you know, more than a year to go through the process yeah. on the long side. It, it depends on where you're at. So were there any tense moments uh, and where you thought, oh gosh, I'm not sure we were ready for this. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's it's one of the things I loved as Thomas in, in this beginning was talking about the continuous improvement piece, you know, because I, I definitely had moments where I sat there thinking, but there's so much more we could be doing and there's so much more we want to do and, and maybe we should wait. And, um, you know, in conversations with yourself and, and with Liz, our relationship manager, you know, what you guys really helped me to embrace was that continuous improvement is part of the mark process. It's, it's part of good management. And so it's not about being perfect, but it is about committing to having a really robust foundation to build from, you know, and, and part of that is making sure you've got your measurements in place and making sure you, you, you know where you're going and what your aims are. And part of it is always stretching. And you know, for, for us, um, achieving this mark is, is a fantastic um, step in the development of our, our program and something that we look forward to continuing to build on um, now that we have that really strong foundation. That's wonderful. Well, Bethany, as always, it is a delight to talk to you. Uh, I look forward to our interim check-in next year where we get to well, talk I can't, about I the can't wait. I can't wait, Maureen. Listen, I just want to say uh, congratulations to all the recertifying and newly certified companies. Thanks so much, Bethany. Thanks, Maureen. We're going to turn our cameras and our mics off now and uh, allow uh, Maura back onto the stage. You are, Maureen. We're racing through to a virtual stage. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Um, I'm Moira from Business in the Community. I just reflected, if you don't know who Business in the Community is, though I know many of our members are joining us today, over 200 of them, but we're a nonprofit network. And we've been going since the year 2000 when nobody was talking about CSR and sustainability, I can tell you. And I can easily say the last 24 months have probably been the busiest we've ever had. We're a small nonprofit. But we always say we're small but mighty. But we are working with now 120 of the largest companies in Ireland. And it's challenging work. And we're always trying to push standards. And we created this standard, as Maureen said, back in 2010. And it's about continuous improvement. Bethany actually really said it much perfectly there. It is about continuous improvement. And we are getting some questions and we are keeping an eye on them. And we are will respond to you afterwards about how the mark works. There's loads of information on our website. And Maureen will also update you you know, about our capacity uh, to take on new companies because we've been so busy. But uh, I might just ask you to turn off your camera for the moment because I think we've just given a sneak peek of one of our newly market certified companies there. So if, uh, hello, Jim, thanks so much. I won't tell you where Jim is from yet. You can find out in a few minutes, but let's crack on. So um, first up, we have seven new certified companies to the mark. They have gotten certified for the first time in 2021 slash early 2022. I'll go alphabetical and I will fly through this and I will be asking each person to turn on their camera, unmute, 30 seconds to say something, stay on screen and we'll take a group photograph at the end. So first off, which I hope I remember the alphabet, it is Alchemez. Alchemez, major pharmaceutical company. Noel Clerken should be joining us. Noel, Noel is the director of engineering for Alchemez. We will actually hear from Noel's fabulous colleague, Nolene, in a couple of seconds. Maureen will be talking to her about being certified to the mark. And there he is. And a huge kudos, I know, to Billy Creven out there. Uh, Thomas was actually up in Alchemez uh, with Minister Troy recently, um, just to congratulate them. No, 30 seconds or less. Congratulations, first of all. Why go for the standard? It's a tough standard. Why was this important to your company? 
Uh, good morning, uh, good morning, Mario, and all Thank the there in uh, business and the community of Ireland. Um, good morning, all. Yeah, uh, well, first thing, I'm delighted uh, to accept the business work and responsibility mark on behalf of all the Encarmis employees here in Athlone. Uh, the business work and responsibility mark is a tremendous demonstration of our company purpose in action um, as we strive to make a real impact for our patients, our, our families, and indeed our communities. Mm. Certification to the mark is also a resounding endorsement of our unwavering commitment and dedication from our employees who have engaged in socially responsible and sustainable activities over many years on site. And the, cert the certification now also presents the site with incredible momentum as we now look to continue our environmental, social and governance journey into the years ahead. Brilliant. No, thank you so much. Congrats again. The mark is valid for three years when you get audited, but we also do check-ins as well. And again, more information on our website because I don't want the questions. No, thank you so much. You can mute yourself, but stay on. Um, second up, alphabetically, it is on post. And what a what a few years on post has had. Nicola, how are you? Chief, Chief Transformation Officer. You know, huge team in on post behind this. I know Annie McHugh, I've been dealing with, and Rachel, and a fabulous team. But, you know, a huge two years for Unpost and, and you as an organization have gone through a huge transformation. Why is sustainability so important in getting that right for Unpost right now? It's really important to us because we're one of the largest employers in Ireland. We have the largest retail network in Ireland and we have one of the largest fleets in Ireland. So we have to make sure that we're living, leaving a positive mark on the communities that we serve. And we saw obtaining this particular mark as very important to us as a business as it recognized that in Unpost, we're more than making commitments and creating plans, we really are delivering actions um, in our community. And we're really proud to um, receive recognition for this. Um, but I'd especially like to thank all of our postmen and women, as well as the many other employees that played a part in helping us to achieve this mark. And I'd also like to thank the business and the community team for all of the help and support that you provided us along the way. Oh, thanks so much, Nicola. And oh my God, my, my postman has been delivering a lot of packages over the last, <laughs> over the pandemic. I think we all have gotten to know our postman and our postwoman incredibly well. So thank you to all those in incredible, um, you know, frontline providers and who took care of us over the last two years. Next up, we have Grant Thornton, and I should have Michael there. I hope Michael McTeer is there. If you can turn on your camera, Michael. Here we go. Oh, I'm three for three. <laughs> How are you? I'm very well, Mara. Good, and congrats to Neil Taylor and all the team at Grant Thornton. You know, you're an accountancy firm. You've, you know, really interesting what you do, but why is sustainability important to you at Grant Thornton? Why was well, it important to go for this? I think it was why it was important was we were actually doing quite a lot of work, um, but it wasn't being consolidated, it wasn't being driven, and we didn't have a clear path to go along. And I think what um, participation in the mark gave us was clear developments, standards, um, support from the BITC team behind the scenes to help us on the auditing, to give us advice along the way on the steps that were needed to be completed. And it gave us that focus for all of the various work streams to come together and then to actually have something to achieve and obtain at the end of it as well, to know that we had done a good job, albeit we're only on the first layer and we've further work to do. Um, but it, it, it is nice to actually, when you look back and say, yes, we achieved something. And, and I just want to also thank the team in BITC, but more importantly, the team here in Grand Thornton, because it was very much a team effort, but we're delighted to achieve the, the, the mark. And well deserved. Thanks so much, Michael. And, and you can mute there for me, but stay on screen. Um, it, it is hard work and we're going to make it harder for you all the time, as it should be. Um, but it is about, you know, that old classic phrase, uh, if, if it isn't measured, it can't be managed. And that's why we really kind of push this standard. Next up we have, and you saw a sneak preview of him before, but it is uh, Aaron Road Aaron, Irish Rail. Uh, Jim Mead, you should be with us, Jim, if you can turn on your camera and unmute. Where are you, Jim? I was doing so well. I was three for three. Yeah, three for three. I'm here, but the camera doesn't want to un unmute for some reason. Has it been? You're grand, Jim. Should we saw your, your face before? How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing very well, thank you. Um, and I suppose on... Uh, Okay, just to see that this is working there now. Are. There we are, yeah. Okay, thank you. Look, it's, uh, we're, we're doing well, and so we're very happy today, I suppose. And, and on behalf of our team of over 4,200 colleagues in the Northern, we are delighted to be accredited with, with the Business Working Responsibility Mark. 
I suppose, as all the, the MAC recipients will know, it takes considerable effort right across each organisation to secure accreditation. But for us, the MAC reflects and supports our ambition to be the backbone of Ireland's public transport network. Uh, working with our customers, employees, our stakeholders across uh, across our communities to achieve this responsibly, this responsibly and sustainably. I'm not in a railway setting, as you may or may not be able to take uh, from, because I've, I've just finished at a joint Roxas committee over here in the Dáil, uh, on transport and uh, talking about our goals for the future for Ireland, uh, mm. and that accountability and transparency is part of the commitment we make through business working responsibly. Uh, and we thank business the community and congratulate our fellow and, uh, and recertified recipients also. Thanks a million, Jim, and big shout out to Barry as well um, in Irish Rail. And I know there's a huge team behind this market. It ain't easy, as we keep on saying. We always say that to our members, go be prepared. Um, next up, we have Ornua. And I should have Anne Randalls, who, yes, there you are. Anne, Anne is the Director of Corporate Affairs with Ornua. Uh, and we can't see your face yet, but hopefully we can hear you okay. Thanks, Laura. I'm not sure what's happening on the background here. Sorry about that. Um, let, me, let me just see if I can get this to work better. No. You're grand. You know, food industry, food production, it's a, it's a big hot topic now around the whole sustainability agenda. Why go for the mark, Anne, and what does it mean to Ornua? Look, Maura, very much um, sustainability is, is increasingly at the heart of what we do here, and, and that's why it's such a great honour for Ornua to be the first Irish dairy cooperative to achieve the, the business working responsible mark. Um, a, a huge thank you, obviously, to you and the team at the VITC and also obviously to our fabulous Arnua team here in, in, in Arnua as well for, for, for achieving this. We see this mark very much as a, as a testament of excellence in environmental social governance um, for Arnua to be awarded. It, it's very much an endorsement of how we operate. It, it indicates to the community that the way in which we do business is very much best in class and and it, it very much is, it's an integral part of our CSR and our sustainability strategy. And it, it, it drives us to address social, environmental, ethical obstacles and opportunities that face our business and, and, and the wider global community. Um, and look, as a dairy co-op, sustainability is important to us because simply we're now at this very decisive decade. We can't separate out climate change from business risk. Yeah. And as we move forward we move towards greater cohesion, that, that comment from Minister Troy between sustainability and corporate governance, like the market's an essential external framework uh, benchmark on how sustainable, how sustainable we are within our NUA and how we do our business. So it's critically important in, in, in that context. Thanks so much, Anne. Uh, um, and thanks for doing that, even though your camera's broken. So I appreciate that. Um, and, and big shout out to Ava Griffin as well. I've been dealing with her and, and the all the team at our NUA are fantastic. We have two more. Next up, I have... Vermilion, and I should have Ryan Carthy, um, the managing director there. Ryan, are you there? Morning, Ryan. Mark. You got me there? I do. I don't see your ah, I don't see your face yet, but we're having one of those days, aren't we? Hopefully, this might be our last purely virtual event. We'll get to hybrid events soon. Ryan, there you are. Hello. Um, an industry in transition. You know, why go for the standard now, and, and why was it important for you to do this? Yeah, absolutely, Maureen. And you, you've tapped it on the head right there. Um, we've we've always done an, a, a raft of work around sustainability for us. Again, it was about taking stock and measuring what we do and stack it up against our business. Um, and and I look, I'm humbled by the amount of work that the team have done. A number of times we stopped and paused, look at the work, looked at the work we were doing and how it worked with all the other work that we had to do. But the key part for us as as Ireland's only natural indigenous gas produce, energy provider now. It's key for us to understand where we sit in this seriatim of energy. And by completing the mark, it gave us the ability to look at and take stock of all the good work we were doing, but then look forward towards that transition, Moira, that you mentioned. Um, look, we're custodians of a very important asset, that an Irish asset. And as we walk, work towards a transition, it was understanding what we do now, but how, as an energy provider, we can supply the transitional molecules and the molecules of the future when it becomes you know 2030 and beyond um it's it's the industry that we're in that will aid that transition for ireland um so we're keen to look we were very keen to look at ourselves now and then ensure that we could aid the transition as we go through it great thanks for that ryan um, important words actually thanks a million and thanks to all the team at vermilion as well and last but by no means least 
we have Owen from William Fry. We heard from Bethany there, um, who's done brilliant work in William Fry. Owen's second legal firm to get it. Um, you know, really interesting. We heard from Priscilla as well. More and more customers, more and more clients, more and more staff, employees, and future talent, the war talents back again, are asking companies around credentials, asking people for data. Um, why was getting this standard important to you all at William Fry? Um, thanks, Laura, and well done to, to everybody who's achieved certification or recertification today. Um, it, it was particularly important because it, it provided a guide for a lot of the efforts that we already had underway. And as Bethany has already articulated uh, and, and, and very clearly, it gave us a real structure around which to focus our efforts. And that has become really important to us, um, driven primarily by our people, um, but also as touched on by Priscilla earlier on. Uh, by our clients. You know, it's something that, frankly, our clients expect us to be doing. Um, we've also found it a terrific way in which to partner with clients on their efforts. And again, some of it was touched on earlier on, you know, clients are actually looking to us to partner with them on particular efforts. And we've a couple of particular initiatives going on at the moment. Um, so for that reason, um, and driven by our, our, our people and their desire to have something that is structured uh, in, in this space, it has, it has become very important. And actually in the attraction of talent, it is something that is increasingly being asked by graduates and recruits uh, and at more and more junior levels all the time, it seems to be something that is really important to our most junior people and people who are interested in a, in a career in law. Absolutely, it's a differentiator and, and trust me Owen, after us banging on about sustainability for 22 years now. We started in 2000, that was music to our ears. And, you know, and I think the investor community is important, the customers, consumers, everything. So a huge congrats. We know it isn't easy and it should be challenging, but these are the new companies, the seven new companies. They joined 46 companies in total. We're going to, Anne, you got your camera right in time. Well done. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna stop talking for a second and readjust my face and Lorraine, uh, who is our events guru, is gonna take a quick screen grab. So I'm gonna shut up for 30 seconds. Perfect, flawless. We will put that in social media. Huge congrats. Thank you so, so much. Um, and, and, you know, keep up the, the important work around this agenda as well. The new urgency to this agenda now. So thank you so much. And great to see so many sectors as well. You can turn off your cameras. You can stay mute. Now you can enjoy our last conversation. Maureen, back over to you. You are going to talk to Alchemist, uh, which is one of our new companies. So uh, back over to you, Maureen. Thanks a million. Thanks, Moira. And yes, congratulations to, to all our, our new uh, newly certifying companies. And as Moira mentioned, we've got your last in conversation uh, talk here with Nolene Warren uh, of Alchemies. Nolene, can you turn on your camera? Can Hi, Maureen. Oh, there you are. There you are. Sorry. Hello. <laughs> Congratulations, this is your first time through. Um, I, I'm curious as to, to why you decided to, to go for MARC certification um, and, and what results have you seen uh, if we're going through it? No, thanks a million and we're delighted to get it. Congratulations to all the companies and the recertifications as well, it's great. Um, the decision to actually go for it was a couple of elements. Uh, for many, many years, like all the other companies, we have been doing various elements of environment, social and governance uh, throughout many years. And it was, how do we bring it to the next level? What is our next step in this journey and to bring it on? Um, you know, even from a global perspective, our leadership team and our CEO, Richard Pops, is hugely invested in, you know, driving this agenda and driving these elements forward. So that was a huge part of where do we go to next? Other parts of it was obviously our stakeholders, like our employees, our investors, our communities, our local communities, our leadership team all wanted to know, you know, where are we going with this? Like all the other guys I've talked about, you know, we went out in 2019 and had an innovation hub on our site and asked our employees, you know, what do you want us to do in this in this area? And we were overwhelmed by the response. It was really fantastic to know that people wanted to see things in this area and to build our journey in this area. So that formed a huge part. And really, you know, we needed to know where <laughs> we needed to know where to bring our journey to next. And 
that really started us looking at, well, what would fit best for us and what would fit best for, best for Alchemies. So going out there and benchmarking against what other companies were doing, what other organizations were out there. So obviously we, we found business in the community and the business working responsibly mark and said, okay, this looks to be the right fit for us. You know, the community and the specialists that, you know, not just the BIT specialists and the support that's given, but the other companies there as well, like the generosity from other companies we've had through this journey has been absolutely amazing from site visits at the very beginning to see how they have implemented it, what it looks like live and even when we're in the middle of the process having folks come talk to our senior leadership team and talk to our steering committee and say this is what we've done this is the benefits we've seen it was hugely important to have that and to have that support so that really set us on that decision to go for the mark as well as the management system structures was hugely important for us yeah, and, it, and it's interesting. So first off, I love the idea that you were able to go to other companies um, and get their perspective on this to help you through your journey. I think um, while the mark is an individual process, I think we do have the opportunity to really learn from each other a little bit more. So it's great that you took uh, the leadership there and, and did that. Um, and I think maybe that's an opportunity for us to improve as we go forward uh, as well. Now, the other thing that you did really, really well was you got the governance right from the very start. Um, so can you talk to me a little bit about that and, and the role of leadership? Yeah, it was hugely important to get that buy-in. You know, mm. I think luckily we had an easy enough conversation to have, have with our leadership team. And that buy-in was just a huge part of getting this, this part of the journey up and running. You know, sitting with our steering committee and giving them the business case of, as we've talked about, you know, as has been muted throughout the conversations today, you know, th this, this area is growing, it's ever expanding and it changes so, so quickly. And, you know, it's, it's just no longer a nice to have it, you know, or a, the, it's the right thing to do for sure, but it's also has to form part of your business strategy. You know, if we want investment, if we want to grow as a company globally, as well as internationally and uh, within Ireland ourselves, you know, we need to have this as part of our, our strategy. You know, all of that is so important. And it was a very easy conversation to have with our leadership, you know, and to then to sit down and look at, OK, what's the right governance structures for us? Mm -hmm. You know, we sat back and kind of said, OK, we've, we've kind of done this before, especially with management systems, the Plan Do Check Act, all that good stuff. You know, we're accredited to ISO 14001. We have some familiar and familiarity in some areas. So then we kind of look to past experience. Let's put in a steering committee. You know, that was sponsored by the general manager. We had a corporate co-sponsor, which was hugely important as well. Mm -hmm. And then all of the five pillars had a senior leadership sponsor and then pillar leaders and pillar teams under that. So that governance structure just really drove, drove the changes and, and drove us putting the action together. Mm -hmm. We had such wonderful pockets of work going on and the mark and the management system structures just put it all under the wood umbrella left it very easy for us to bring that steering committee together to bring those pillars together and get all our colleagues working collaborative, collaboratively underneath it which was hugely important and to have that senior leadership support there you know that this is important this does need to happen you know we went at different stages. It's obviously a very rigorous, rigorous process, as we've all said, which is hugely important to it as well. And mm -hmm. um, that, you know, it's that independent and it's that rigorous, you know, at each of the stages, we went back to the leadership team to let them know this is what's happening. You know, this is where we're at. And, you know, we got that buy in every time. Yeah, fire ahead and let's go to the next stage, you know, so it was great to have that. It is great to have that. You're absolutely right. And and I the, the thing that I remember about Alchemies is whenever we had a meeting um, that we were going to have, there would be 20 or 30 people on that meeting. It was, <laughs> you brought the whole village <laughs> along. <laughs> in your sort yeah. of Which, I mean, it's brilliant, you know, it's absolutely a brilliant way to approach it because it, what a great way to uh, affect change is to have people participating in the process and going along with you as you're doing it. So, yeah. I really do have to admire you on, on the way that you you put the governance in place. And as you say, you had your leadership support there. Now we've got just like 30 seconds kind of a thing for this, this last question here. So 
just really quick, um, we, we talked about, you talked a little bit about your management systems. You talked about that very formal structure that you had put in place for your ISOs. So was it then, it, that didn't exist across the whole of your organization. Uh, it, it wouldn't exist across the whole of anybody's organization. How, how did you apply that to the mark content and kind of, was it a copy paste or, or what happened there? It was definitely, couldn't have been a, a copy paste, especially for some of, some of the subjects or the pillars, but mm -hmm. what was hugely important to us was the support we had with you guys in terms of, you know, we need direction. So we didn't want to go out overboard, well, not overboard, but, you know, we needed to hone in on what was important for each of those indicators and each of those pillars to actually develop the right structures around it from a management point of view. So that was hugely important to get that guidance, to get that expert support, you know, to really make sure, yes, we're honing in on what's important. We are actually doing X, Y, and Z already, which forms part of it, which was a huge part of, I think, um, what others have said as well is like, you don't realize what, how much of it you're actually doing until you get into the nitty gritty of the mark and the structures. And you see, yes, you are doing this already. It's just about bringing it together. You know, it's a huge, important milestone for us to, to have this mark. And it's a key step in our journey. But it's definitely that continuous process is, is a huge part of it, you know? Yeah, well, it, it was absolutely a delight working with Alkermes. Um, and you, I, thanks to I Killian and yourself and the whole team and Billy, who I know couldn't make it, but he's a huge part of it too. Absolutely, yep. Yeah. And I look forward, I look forward to our check-in uh, next year where we get to see even more progress. So thanks so much, Nolene, for your time. Thanks a million. Great, uh, so we have finished our conversations and I see Thomas, you have come back to us here for our, our closing and our wrap up with a little bit of version five thrown in as well. Absolutely, and what a what a, what an exciting hour it, it has been hearing about the the motivations and and the drivers uh, for for companies to to look at continuous improvement across uh, across everything we do. Uh, just a very quick word because we won't explain version five in three minutes. Uh, but essentially, the, the the rigor that we want to apply to the business working responsibly mark means that on a regular basis we update the requirements the content and, and you heard earlier from Priscilla talking about um, responsible technology. And that is very much at the heart of the new version that we're commencing uh, this year. It is um, all, all companies uh, certifying for the first time will be um, applying version, version five and there's a transition process for companies that are recertifying. Um, there, is a, there is a lot to talk about that and we will come back uh, in terms of the contents and the requirements and the process. But just to say that uh, 2022 is going to be quite a, a busy year for us, and there is a significant number of uh, business and the community member companies that will be undergoing recertification and certification for the first time. We're nearly, nearly um, uh, booked up, out uh, for, 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 for quite some time, and we'll, but we'll be more than happy to talk to any company that's interested in the business working responsibly, Mark, and the whole, and the whole process and supports. I'm going to bring this event to a close. I, um, before saying a, a, a few thank yous, I, I, I want to um, first and foremost congratulate the 46 companies that are uh, holders of the certification. It is, it is a privilege uh, for us to see that the momentum that is growing when it comes to uh, responsible business practices and the role that the market is, is, is playing. There was a very interesting comment around SMEs in the Q&A from uh, Roshin Garvey, and definitely uh, a supply chain is, is an area where we need to bring further the ethos and, 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 and the rigor of the business working responsibly mark. Now on the thank yous, I firstly want to say a big thanks to uh, our partners in the National Standards Authority of Ireland, to Geraldine Larkin, its CEO, and the auditors in particular that have done a superb work. I want to thank Minister Robert Troy for taking the time to, uh, to prepare the message and, and to engage so much in, in our work. I want to give a special shout out to um, Naomi Cooper in CRH and Lisa Harlow in Intel, who were uh, key drivers of this whole journey. And it's fantastic to see them recertified uh, for the fifth time. So huge congratulations to them and to all the other companies. And uh, in my team, uh, to the Business Working Responsibly Mark team, Maureen O'Donnell, 
Samira Mushini and Fina Kirkham, the whole membership services team and our marketing colleagues who have done yet again a superb job. It's 12 o'clock. Thank you very much. And uh, very much looking forward to the ongoing conversation and dialogue ar around how we really embed sustainability across our business and make it meaningful. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.